can one begin to tell a story that has been told many times, but which has never been heard by many people who could make it have a different ending? The human family likes for all its stories to have a happy ending, but we have our tragedies, and some stories end in just that way. Some folk are able to take tragedy and turn it into triumph, take hopelessness and delete the lessness, take defeat and turn it into victory. Such accomplishment does not come without dedication, pain, and sacrifice. Passenger trains going west at one time passed through Haywood County, and many a person recognized the lighted cross as being the landmark of Lake Junaluska. There, under the shadow of the lighted cross, was a body of water and the assembly grounds for the southeastern jurisdiction of the United Methodist Church. Few people bothered to ask where the name came from or what it meant. Today, a life-size bronze torso of Cherokee Chief Junaluska is on the grounds of Lake Junaluska as a memorial to this great man. It is believed that he was born in the Great Smoky Mountains in the year of 1758. To quote the brochure describing the memorial, his life is closely interwoven with this nation's most turbulent, wildly exciting, and radical years. The courage and heroism that characterized his life has been described as that relationship that in all times unite a great person with other persons. It was June Luska who saved General Andrew Jackson's life at the Battle of Horseshoe Bend in Alabama during the War of 1812. General Jackson was attacked by two Creek Indian warriors. After Jackson was elected President of the United States, he ordered all Ch Indians east of the Mississippi removed to the west, including the Cherokees. Junaluska then said, If I had known that Jackson was going to do this, I would have let him die at Horseshoe Bend. Junaluska means one who tries and fails. Chief Junaluska and his wife are buried at Robbinsville. The Cherokee Nation has had many great leaders over the course of history. The Methodist Church has had the privilege of sharing its faith with many of them. Sometime after 1827, Chief John Ross was converted to Christianity under the preaching of a Methodist minister. One great example of the compassion of the Cherokee people came during the Trail of Tears march. John Burnett, a private in the Army and a participant in that march, recorded his memories for his grandchildren on his 80th birthday. One of the 4,000 to die on that march from cold, exposure, and pneumonia was a beautiful Christian wife, Quaity, of Chief John Ross. The noble woman died a martyr to childhood, giving her only blanket for the protection of a sick child. She rode thinly clad through a blinding sleet and snowstorm, developed pneumonia, and died in the, in the still hours of a bleak winter night. Her burial place is unknown, but her spirit of caring and sacrificial sharing has lived on and has been embodied in many of the Cherokees who have lived after her. Today, 9,551 persons are enrolled members of the Eastern Band of the Cherokees. Approximately 6,000 of these reside on the Kuala boundary in western North Carolina. Jonathan Taylor, principal chief of the Eastern Band of the Cherokees, shared some of his hopes and dreams for his people. Chief Taylor said he would like to see the time come when the Eastern Band of Cherokees would be self-supporting, that is, have enough work on the reservation so the people would not have to leave for employment. He would like to see three or four of the doctors be Cherokee Indians. He hopes for the time to come when all of the staff at the local Bureau of Indian Affairs will be Cherokees. The chief dreams of the day when more Indian people will be in business, especially in the shops in the downtown areas. He is very much concerned about that the children and youth of Indian families get good education. He expressed concern for the older members of the tribe. He feels that there is an urgent need to build a nice rest home and nursing home for these people. Those needing such care now have to leave the reservation and become depressed when they are away from their own people and out of their environment. Providing for the young and old weigh heavy on Chief Taylor's heart. Tom Queen, an Eastern Cherokee, is co coordinator of the outreach ministries of the Cherokee United Methodist Church. Tom tells us something about his land and his people. 
During the earlier days of their contact with the white race, my people saw value in their agricultural methods and adapted their farming to some of those procedures. The European dress also became the accepted dress for many of them. Tobacco and corn, maize, were introduced to the white settlers by my people. Both have become major agriculture crops in many areas of the country. The land of the Cherokees, locally referred to as the Kuala Boundary, 56,000 acres, can only be owned by members of the tribe. All land transactions must be approved by the tribal council. Many of the people take pride in owning their own homes. This has been made possible partly through the assistance of the Kuala Housing Authority. The payments are based on their income and ability to pay. A number of the Cherokee people own their own businesses, such as motels, eating establishments, grocery stores, gift shops. The tribal government operates a motel, a fish hatchery, and several other enterprises, including fish and game management, water and sewer system, fire and police departments, and Cherokee bingo games. The Kuala Arts and Crafts Mutual is a cooperative where the local people can sell their crafts. Many of my people are gifted and trained in various arts, basketry, wood sculpturing, carving and etching, pottery, bead jewelry, stone carving. The Boys Club was established in 1932 at the boarding school. In 1964, it was incorporated by the tribe as a non-profit, self-supporting enterprise. The club employs 270 persons. It provides educational opportunities, vocational and leadership training, and recreation for Cherokee people, especially youth, which is called the Cherokee Challenge. This program provides educational service and adventure programs for 84 youth. Youth are selected to participate in this program according to their needs. The Boys Club earns its revenue by providing services for various agencies. The club operates 37 school and charter buses. It operates a graphic arts department, maintains its own buses, has a contract to provide trash removal for the entire uh, Great Smoky Mountain National Park and the O'Connell Lufty Job Corps, provides food for the schools and the Job Corps provides roadside mowing, provides laundry service for the hospital, school, and job corps in several motels. It provides janitorial service for the school and agency, has a construction department that builds houses and other needed construction for the tribe, maintains all club buildings, and does contract work for the public. It also operates a family center and children's home. This is one of the amazing institutions of the reservation. The O'Connell Lufty Indian Village and the Museum of Cherokee Indian are maintained to inform visitors about the traditions, including history, housing, government, and skills of the people. Some of the businesses are leased from the Cherokees by individuals and company. The largest employer in Swain County is located on the reservation. It is Barclay, manufacturer of home products. This single company now employs 364 persons. Native Americans compose 88% of the employees, with a number of them in supervisory positions. The company takes pride in its relationship with the local people. The management is involved in local affairs and has worked hard at trying to understand the culture and make a significant contribution to the community. This company has a payroll of about $3.2 million and puts a half a million into the local economy through rents and levies. Another important industry on the reservation is the Cherokees. This company manufactures a large line of traditional Indian goods, moccasins, headdresses, beaded goods, dolls, wood carvings, plaques, etc., make up a small list of their products. Some of their products are shipped to markets as far away as Europe. About one-third of their production is sold in the various stores on the reservation. This company employs about 125 to 140 persons 97% of whom are Native Americans. The local American Legion maintains a cemetery for veterans. They are proud of the fact that many of their young men have served in the military service of this country. 
Charles George was the recipient of the Congressional Medal of Honor in the Korean conflict. Others have been awarded silver and bronze stars, Purple Heart, and other awards. The Sali Manor provides apartments and services for the senior citizens according to their ability to pay. The senior citizens have a craft group that makes and sells crafts made by its members. They have a band that plays for various groups. A noon meal is provided by the nutritional service. The senior citizens have projects to earn money for trips they enjoy taking together. The Reverend Don Herman, former missionary to Malaysia and Indonesia, has been serving as pastor to the Methodist people for over 10 years. Don shares with us some of his thoughts relating to his church and ministry. There are reports that the work of the Methodist Church among the Cherokees began as early as 1822. According to the sign at our present church, the original mission was established in the year 1830. In many respects, the United Methodist Church in Cherokee is very much like any other United Methodist Church. We struggle with the same basic issues as other churches, maintenance of building, finances, involvement of members, and so on. Our members have the same needs as other persons. They wrestle with sickness, death, life's meaning and purpose. Religion has always played an important role in the life of the Cherokee people. According to the guides at the village, the Cherokees have always worshipped one supreme being. Their religion or faith has always been interwoven with their daily lives and activities. Cherokee United Methodist Church is like any other United Methodist Church in terms of organization and activities, but we are unique in that we are located on the land of the eastern band of Cherokee Indians in the Great Smoky Mountains and our membership is tri-racial. Although most of our members are Eastern Cherokee, we also have Caucasians, blacks, and persons from other Native American tribes. Even with this diversity, our congregation is very harmonious. Our ministry grows out of the caring nature of this congregation and touches the entire community as we endeavor to minister to the total needs of persons. The church provides the facilities for a day nursery and a log cabin learning center for high-risk children. Both of these services are operated under the auspices of the Southwestern Child Development Corporation of Silva. A service center is operated where donated clothing, furniture, and appliances are sold at a very nominal price. The profit from these sales pays the salaries of two employees and the maintenance of the building. Through the Keener Craft Shop, crafts are bought from local people and sold to tourists and other visitors. Proceeds from these sales pay the salary of the manager, take care of maintenance, and go to buy more crafts. A meeting place is provided by the church for regular meetings of Alcoholics Anonymous and Al-Anon. Like most communities in our country, alcohol is a number one drug problem in Cherokee. The pastor and several church members are actively involved in the Tribal Coordinating Committee on Chemical Dependency. A caring group meets weekly to discuss the needs of the community and make plans to meet these needs. A grief group is now gathering to listen to and support people who have recently lost a loved one or who are dealing with terminal illness. The church family is organized into neighborhood groups that meet for Bible study fellowship and discuss the needs of the community. A church van is used to provide transportation for church activity for those who have emergency situations develop. The members are involved in ministry. A group of members go regularly to the nursing home at Bryson City and a rest home in Cullowee to have a worship service for the Native Americans and others there. A weekly worship service in the Cherokee language is held for some of the older members in one member's home. Members of this small congregation take pride in the fact that the local church sends those who are interested on building teams to other places. Youth groups and other volunteers come to the church in Cherokee desiring to be part of the ministry of the community. Sometimes they work on church property. At other times they may provide a service to an elderly member or to a person with a handicapping condition. A Good Samaritan fund is maintained in the local church to assist persons with emergency needs. The coordinator of outreach ministries 
Tom Queen often is called upon to make presentations to local churches and to be part of mission saturation events. The church cooperates with community ministries, such as directing people who are passing through and have needs to the traveler's aid. This fund is supported by the local business persons and is administered by the police department. The church provides meals for the senior citizens on federal holidays when the Solly Manor is closed. Sunday school and worship are conducted much as in any other church. The present pastor has been made an honorary member of the tribe. This is a rare honor and one not bestowed on many non-Indian persons. Over the century and a half of its being, the Cherokee Church has been blessed by support from churches across the state. Clothing and other items are given to the service center. Many churches support the church through advanced special mission giving. One of the goals of the church is to become self-supporting. This is made more difficult by the fact that the unemployment level is high, 15% in the summer and 45.4% in the winter and the income level is low in this area. Each year its budget increases, but so does its ministry. It continues to need the prayers and support of the caring Christians across our annual conference.